Next will be uh, Joseph Biber, who's going to talk to us uh, on an update on microbial keratitis. Thanks, yeah. Great. Uh, thanks for having me here today. I'm going to be talking about an update on uh, microbial keratitis. I have no uh, financial interest or disclosures. I uh, thought we'd start first with two case reports. Uh, this is a 22-year-old student with a, a central corneal ulcer that comes in. Uh, as we approach this patient, we always think about two main questions. Should we culture this patient, and then how should we treat them? Fortified antibiotics or just monotherapy? The next case comes in is a 22-year-old, and this patient actually is your daughter with a little bit of a more mid-peripheral lesion, similar in size. Would you treat these patients differently? Those are some of the questions we hope to answer. As with all medical problems, a good history is a good starting point. You want to ask this patient specifically if they've worn contacts. Uh, that's the most common risk factor that we see, especially if they're sleeping in their contacts. You also want to ask about recent history of trauma or uh, uh, prior surgery. Uh, uh, historically, there have been two approaches to clinical uh, to corneal ulcers. There's been the traditional approach, uh, culturing and fortified antibiotics, followed by the practical approach, which is more of a clinical diagnosis followed by monotherapy. The advantages of the traditional approach is that you get an accurate diagnosis of the organism. With gram stains, you can find out these results within two or three hours after presentation. And in this day and age of resistance, you can tailor your therapy and make sure you don't, you've got good sensitivity to that antibiotic. Uh, the disadvantages is sometimes it's impractical. Uh, you have to have a lab that you're willing to work with, and that, that increases the cost not only to the practice but to the patient. And there are some toxicities associated with fortified antibiotics. Uh, the advantages of the practical approach is there's reduced cost to the patient, to the practice. The new fluoroquinolones have great penetration, therefore their efficacy and toxicity is, is very, uh, very good. The disadvantages is sometimes with these atypical or resistant organisms, you can delay the diagnosis. So the recommended approach is for mild to moderate infections is a clinical diagnosis with empiric treatment. Severe infections, you want to culture and treat those with uh, vancomycin and, and tobramycin. So the question is, what is a mild to moderate infection? This is our 22-year-old daughter that came in. This is a, a, a lesion that's outside the visual axis, less than three millimeters in diameter, and there's no history of trauma. I think in this case, certainly a clinical approach with uh, initiation treatment of uh, fluoroquinolone is indicated, and this patient should do well. However, for severe infections, uh, if they're within three millimeters of the visual axis or they're greater than three millimeters in size, or if the patient has a history of trauma or atypical infection, or if you're monitoring a mild infection that's not responding to treatment, uh, then for these patients, you want to go ahead and culture these patients, identify what type of organism you're dealing with, and then treat with fortified antibiotics. And I like to use vancomycin and aminoglycoside. Uh, the fluoroquinolones, again, as we mentioned earlier, they're, they're very broad spectrum. They, they penetrate very well, therefore they're very potent, and they're low toxicity. They're easily available. Most of us have these as samples in our closet, or they can get them at any pharmacy. Uh, for the fortified antibiotics, I like vancomycin at 25 milligrams per milliliter, and the aminoglycosides at 14 milligrams per milliliter. Uh, these medicines uh, can be toxic, so you have to watch the response, but uh, in this day and age of resistance, uh, these medicines can be important. Uh, in terms of treatment, I like to get as much uh, antibiotic onto the infection as quickly as we can. So you load the cornea. I tell patients every 10 to 15 minutes for the first hour, followed by every hour for the first 24 hours. You're monitoring these patients daily to look for their clinical response. You want to see their infiltrate consolidating, their epithelium starting to heal, and finally a reduction of the intraocular reaction if you have a hypopian. Uh, for corticosteroids, uh, there are two, two theories. There's one that, uh, that corticosteroids promote healing by minimizing scar formation, minimizing neovascularization. There's also some concern that maybe by delaying the immune response, uh, they can encourage melting, especially in fungal infections. You have to be very careful. The question is always when and if to start steroids. There was a study done called the SCUT study that uh, was a Five, uh, 500 patients, multi-center study looking at bacterial infections treated with uh, topical steroids. They found there was no difference in best corrective visual acuity uh, in patients treated with uh, pred, pred phosphate or uh, versus a placebo. Uh, however, they did find for severe infections there was, there was some benefit. Uh, 
So in general, when the, when the ulcer starts to sterilize, uh, or when it is sterilized, and that's when I like to add a uh, steroid, especially if it's an essential ulcer that you're trying to prevent scarring and prevent that patient from maybe needing keratoplasty in the future. Uh, for gram negative, sometimes you have to be cautious. And, and again, the take home message is any concern of fungal infection, you have to be very, very cautious with corticosteroid use. Anytime I start corticosteroids, I end up at, seeing the patient back the following day. Occasionally, these patients will continue to progress despite your aggressive and appropriate treatment. They can perforate and require therapeutic keratoplasty. I thank you for your time and attention this morning. Many of you uh, changed your uh, therapy in terms of fluoroquinolone use for corneal ulcers, uh, in terms of what you're using for quinolone wise. Fluoroquinolone-wise, usually if it's just a, a, a mild to moderate infection, I'll use whatever sample I have in the office. Um, if it's a patient I'm worried about with their ocular surface, I do think probably uh, moxifloxacin is less toxic to the epithelium and may, may allow better healing of the epithelium in a patient that you're concerned about that issue. I bring this up. I've been seeing more staph uh, ulcers, you know, that's ones that you kind of showed there. And so I've been using uh, Besavans more frequently recently. I like the data uh, in terms of the kill curves because you're just seeing staph more often. Any of, I any of you? Same, I do the same thing. I usually um, use Besavansacin if the patient can get it and it's available as a first line of fluoroquinolone. And do you, do you load it? Um, I do. How do you yeah. treat them? Um, like, so you do it every what? I do it usually like um, in, the, in the office, I'll usually have them do it, maybe um, a drop every 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and then it's every hour for the first day, I usually have them, um, that's just times three, and then maybe every hour for the first 24 hours, then I'm usually checking them back the next day. Yeah, I like the dirt side vehicle too, because it stays on the eye. Yeah. The, the other change I've, I've seen in, in ulcers is that I think the fluoroquinolones are so efficacious and penetrate so well that we've been allowed to be aggressive with steroids and reduce scarring uh, until kind of the recent kind of mini epidemic of fungal keratitis. I don't know if people on the panel, I, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we'd see one or two cases a year in fungal keratitis. And now with contact lens wearers and immunosuppressed patients and things, we're seeing a couple cases a month. So, you know, if it's, a, if it's an atypical appearing lesion, certainly if they're satellites, you want to be cautious about making sure this Indolent ulcer isn't fungal keratitis until you and to hold off on steroids, but I, I'm seeing a lot more fungal keratitis. I don't know if the panel is or not. So will you start treatment uh, empirically? Before you no, it? but I'll, I'll hold off on the steroids a little bit until I'm, I'm confirmed that this is it's, a, it's, a, it's an ulcer responding to antibiotic therapy. John, do you have any comments? I, I, I totally agree. I have the same experience. Any re why are we seeing more fungal keratitis now than ever? Global, global warming. <laughs> <laughs>